This is the capital fireplaces, Woodrow, five kilowatt, Eco 2022, highly efficient, wood only stove. This only has one secondary air control, which is here, and also has a bleed of tertiary air, which passes up stanchions at the back of the stove. The air is passed through the air control into side tubes that pass up into the top part of the stove. I'm now gonna show you another video of the four kilowatt stove in action and how we light it. So we're gonna move over to that one now to continue uh, the video. The air passes through this small gap into the chamber, which cleans the glass and also promotes um, a really efficient, up to 83% efficiency burn. Uh, you've got some tertiary air holes at the back there. The tertiary air feed comes in from the feed underneath, but also is drip fed up the back through um, some stanchions that hold the heat shield on. As with all uh, new stoves, uh, the first burn um, may give off slight fumes from the curing of the paintwork. Uh, the best thing to do with this is make sure you've got a well ventilated uh, room so maybe open some windows in the room that the stove is and have very small fires to start off with uh, one or two um, and this should help to cure the paint and after that there shouldn't be any uh, smell from the fumes when fueling the fire it's better off to start with two quarter logs that you put in a position like this, it runs horizontal to the opening of the fire, and then smaller kindling across the top. And then use alternate kindling across, a bit like a noughts and crosses pattern, and go and then go down to a smaller kindling, the higher you get. Place a fire lighter underneath if you can, and then a fire lighter on the top as well. And then you're ready to light. With a lighted match or a lighter, light the two fire lighters. This method of lighting is called the Stuttgart method. Once it starts to take, close your door, albeit leaving about a quarter of an inch. So we can just have some air coming in through the side of the door. This will act as a, a primary air take until we've got the uh, firebox warmed up enough. This is after about five minutes. You can see that the, uh, the kindling's really got hold now and it's starting to really warm up inside the box. So what I'm gonna try and do now is uh, I'm just gonna see if it's ready for the door to be shut. There can be a little bit of a whistle at this, at this time. Uh, this sometimes happens before it's fully reached temperature. You can slightly adjust this by just pushing it the middle and then the wall goes as you can see I've shut the door a little bit too early it's only been about, about five or six minutes so really we need to open it up again the minimum should really be about 20 minutes with the door open to get the fire up to its operating temperature this could be a longer period of time 
um, up to 30 minutes, 35 minutes, just depending on where your house is situated. If, you're, if you've got a north facing chimney, it's going to be a lot colder than it would be if it was south facing. Also, depending on where your prevailing winds are or where topographically your house is, whether it's in a, in a valley or on the top of a hill, or if it's got high trees or other buildings around it, it could take longer depending on what it is. Also, the length of, your, length of the flue or chimney could also have an issue here. The kindling's been burning for about six or seven minutes now. Um, I'm going to put some, uh, some larger fuel on now. I'm still going to leave the door open for approximately another 10 to 15 minutes just until this takes and um, gets the firebox up to, up to the correct temperature, what I need to get everything uh, working really well and the confection to be working um, and it to be fully efficient. We've had the door open now for about 20 minutes. Uh, I think that it's up to its correct operating temperature and the boxes, fire box is fully warmed up. So I'm going to shut the door now. We get a slight warble with our um, stoves here because of the uh, length of the chimney and the drawer that we have in our area. Um, so this can be adjusted really easy uh, just by slightly moving the control to the middle the reason for the whistling is because we're getting excess air uh, moving through the, the valve and into the stove which we don't need so by moving that over uh, as soon as the, the warbling goes we know we're letting the correct amount of oxygenated air into the box to make it work without overburning. We've been burning now for about 40 minutes. It's time to reload by putting a, uh, another log on. As you can see, the glass has stayed nice and clean. The air wash is working really well and the tertiary you can see pushing out of the back. So it's really ticking over nicely now. So let's put another log on. Log should last about 40 minutes in between, in between fueling. So let's pop this one on. As you can see, one large log is all you need. Any more than that and you'll be over fueling, so you'll be wasting your fuel and potentially over firing your stove and you could possibly do some damage to it. Um, it's really important that moisture content for your logs should be no more than 20%. The best way to do this is to have a moisture meter, get a log, this one's been split recently, and test the moisture content in the middle of your log not on the outside. This log is 6% ready to go, ready to burn. Any more than 20% and it's going to need a longer period of time to dry out before you use it on your appliance.